the kinetic energy of a single particle, single single particle, Ke, is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. I've made a video on the derivation of that, and if you haven't already seen that video, there's a link down below, and you might want to do that. It will make watching this video much clearer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a particle, see if I can draw one, we're going to put a particle in a box. The box is going to have sidewall S. You can think of it as cubicle as you want, because later we are going to use that. But a, a particle in a box of sidewall S. And what we want to talk about is the velocity component of our particle. And the velocity of our particle, suppose it's in an XYZ direction. So it has an X component, a Y component, a Z component. We're principally going to be concerned with the X component. So our particle will move this way. It'll move in the X direction. It'll collide with a wall. It'll turn around and go back and collide with the other wall. It'll come right back to where it is. So then we can talk about the momentum of the particle, delta P. And the momentum of the particle is going to be 2 times the mass times the x component of the velocity. Now, this is, this is just for the one particle. And the reason it's 2 times that is it makes a complete circuit. It's, uh, it's a part, part of the circuit, one full wall distance, and then back again. And so that's, that's how we get uh, 2mx. Now, in terms of the time that it takes for it to go there, it's some number of seconds. And if you look at x up here, x has units of meters per second. All right, x has units of meters per second. S has units of meters. So if we want to know how much time it's going to take, well, it's going to be s meters in some number of meters per second, which is going to be equal to seconds Per collision. Uh, a pretty important concept. Now, let's talk about the force. We know that dpdt, the change in momentum with time, is equal to force. And so that's going to be 2mx over sx, in other words, dp dt. And we can quickly see that that is going to give an average force of 2mx squared over s. Call that the average force. So then the total force, total force, will be equal to the number of molecules times 2mx squared over s. All right. Now, I'd like to move next to pressure. This is going to be the pressure on two walls, although the pressure is pressure. And it's obviously going to be force over area, and the area is going to be 2s squared. Why 2? Because it is this wall, and it's the opposite wall in the x direction. So there's two of those walls, and that's the area. And so force is 2nmx squared over s over 2s squared. That's equal to nmx squared over s cubed. And that becomes n, uh, let's see here, n m nu squared, nu squared being the velocity, all three components, over 3v. And, and what happened here is I changed s cubed to volume, but we're still only talking about the pressure on two walls. And so I had to take one third of the volume instead of all of it. So then pressure is equal to n m nu squared over 3v. That's what we just had. And then if I move this apart just a little bit, I get 3 
PV is equal to N M nu squared. Now, notice this right here is very nearly kinetic energy. Nearly Ke. All right, Ke was equal to one half mass times velocity squared. So it looks like I could divide through by two, and I could say three halves PV is equal to N times one half M velocity squared. And or if I wanted to say that this is the kinetic energy for the, all the systems, since that's just the number of molecules, then I would have Ke kinetic energy equal to three halves PV. Of course, PV is equal to nRT, and so kinetic energy is also equal to three halves nRT. And that is what we were trying to show, so we are done. I appreciate your taking time to watch. Thank you.